No, not today. Too warm. Okay, so quick rundown jobs that I've completed already. Obviously the body is already shaped, the neck pocket has been done, and the brake angle has already been planed into the top. Notice that my body's already carved, that's not ideal. We really should have been doing this when the top was still flat so that we had a nice stable base to rest the router on. But if we've managed to route a neck pocket in this fashion, we should be okay doing the pickup cavities as well. Just to make my life a little bit easier, or should I say make things a little bit quicker, I've purchased a pre-made Perspex pickup cavity template. Really, in order to protect this template and preserve it, I should make my first job to copy that down onto something like a nice thick piece of MDF or plywood. Uh, but again, in the interest of speed, we're just gonna go for it and hope we don't damage the template for now. I have already got my center line on here and I've also drawn where my pickup rings are which has effectively given me the position of the pickups themselves as well but the actual template for obvious reasons is ever so slightly bigger than the pickups themselves so i'm now going to try my best to get that positioned up and then draw around that the pickup template that i'm using has some center lines on it which help for alignment it's more important to get it sort of evenly balanced across the center line that it is to get it in position front or back although that does make a difference to the visual appeal of course I could just stick the template down as is but doing this just helps me make sure that when I do stick it down it's in the right position one of the problems we will come up against is that the radius of typical router bits is usually just a little bit too big to get into the corners on these routes. Looking at my template, it is really so close. I might get away just using that. Before I can do any routing, as always, I just need to hog out as much material as I can from the pickup cavity areas. The typical depth we want to go to for these things is on a carved top like a Les Paul is normally about an inch for the overall pickup cavity and then another quarter of an inch for the ears. I'm working with a very thick two inch body so I might go a little bit deeper than that just to give me the adjustment I need. The main thing we're going to have to watch out for here is the back of the pickup is going to encroach on the neck tenon so we may need to adjust the neck tenon. Normally I would like to do this job in the drill press, but it just so happens due to the thickness of my body and the size of the drill press I have, the travel on it and everything like that, it's, it's not really going to be great for doing this job. It's just on the wrong margins just for that particular drill press. So we're going to be doing it by hand. So I have my drill with a little piece of tape as a depth stop. And as before, I'm first actually just going to concentrate on doing the corners again this isn't actually to give me the shape of the corners as such it's just to make life easier for the router when the router does go in there Now that we've got in as close as we can to those corners, I'm going to use a forstner a bit on this pocket to get most of the material out. And I'll probably just come into this one with a chisel just to get the worst off.
All right, so that might look a little bit messy, but that's just gonna make life a little bit easier for the router. We have got a minor little bit of tear out there, just because I'm being aggressive and using hand tools. Well, aggressively, but um, no, that's okay. So what we need to do now, which is the bit we really do need to pay attention to, is actually just go about lining up our template on the router pocket and we need to take great care in doing that otherwise it's going to look a little bit wonky we are going to rely on the standard masking tape and super glue trick hopefully it will not let us down the top I've got there is slightly carved it's not perfectly flat which is not ideal because it doesn't make perfect contact for all of the gluing surface nor does it really give us a perfectly stable base to put our template on there are There are some screw holes on the template, which I suppose I could actually use to screw that template down. But we'll try gluing it down in the first instance and we'll see how stable it feels. So for this job I've dug out my smaller Bosch router just because it's much more stable on a small surface, a lot more lightweight and I can actually see a lot better than with the Triton. Uh, the Triton would do this job fine, uh, it's just uh, I have the luxury of having a smaller router for the job. I only have a tiny bearing on there, that's probably imagine it's probably half an inch and I've already set it to the correct height so that it's going to be following the template around so without further ado So you can see there from the first pass, other than a little bit of a burn mark from staying too long in the same place, that's actually gone quite well. I would normally take the template off at this point, just so I'm sort of not risking it further, but as it's providing a very good stable base for routing, and I've got some longer router bits as well, I'm actually just going to persevere with this exact setup as it is now. 
I think I'm going to do another pass a little bit lower down with that half inch bit and then once we get to the point where the collet is approaching the top of the template we'll just switch out for a longer bit and keep going until we're at the appropriate depth. So we've done about three passes with the router there and I think we're deep enough. Normally you would actually have to route out the ears for the pickups as well but actually if I test fit the pickup as it is there now and get the wires through the hole which I can't you can see that that's way deeper than I would ever have it and there's still space below it by quite some margin. I have left the, the little pilot holes that I drilled with the drill there in there. I could go deeper to get rid of those and actually add some more weight relief but for the sake of time I think it's absolutely fine. Meanwhile we've got our own little watts on the bench going on. <laughs> what are you working on there Sam? Um, I'm apparently trying to use a heat gun to take the paint off this BC Rich. I bet you don't know what kind of BC Rich it is. I really don't. It's a wall up shape, <laughs> but apart from that, I'm not a clue. I think it's, I think it is called the wall up, but it's the NJ series, which is like the really cheap one. So it's not like a proper wall up shape. But uh, yeah, I think we paid what, 20 quid for that. So we're just having a laugh trying to, trying to refinish it. What's the worst that could happen? Um, I'm going to blow it off because what the worst could <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like a hairdryer. <laughs> Sorted. So now looking head on at my neck pocket and I've already taped the template in place over the top once again. If you just have a look at how far I've got this cutter set to go down into the pocket at the moment. I know the picture is not great but we're ideally wanting to go as deep as we possibly can while still leaving about a centimetre worth of tenon in there. So we're just going to take off light passes, do a few test fits of the neck and the pickups and see how we get on. So the routing of the pickup cavities has gone quite well. Um, there's only really one thing left to do on there which is drill some extra cavities for the lugs of the pickups. I don't actually need to do that on my bridge because my bridge pockets are very deep but I am going to have to do that on the neck. Um, it's already quite apparent that the extra little holes that I drilled for routing out purposes have been a bit too deep. Uh, which is unfortunate, but this isn't a customer instrument or anything like that. It's just for my own personal use, so I'm not really bothered. 
but I have to decide on a method of actually routing these out. Now you can get little templates or you can get inserts for these templates to give you a template just to route those out. I don't have one of those. The only option that I'm aware of that I've really got to be able to do this is to route freehand. I say freehand, I can rest up against the template on the outside, but then it's sort of freehand on the inside. It should be fine, but there is a little bit of potential there for kickback and the likes. To minimize that, I've already got some holds drilled that I can drop the router bit into just to kind of minimize the chance of it kicking off as I initially plunge it. Um, but I can't lie, it's going to be a little bit scary. If anyone thinks they do have any better methods for doing this in the comments, I'd quite like to hear them. Do let me know. Well, that's not actually gone too bad. I just need to clean that out and give it a quick test fit. But yeah, that looks good. So without the, well, to be fair, there is a little bit of, the lugs aren't going in, the screws will definitely go in there. Might clean it up with the chisel a little bit. But I can get the pickup cover about flush with the body, so that, that should be deep enough. And just to show you the back one as well. That one can actually go inside the body by some margin. So I think there will be plenty of clearance for the pickup screws as well. So that's the pickup cavities effectively done. Yes, we have some raggedness in there. I can probably clean some of that up with a chisel. But yes, unfortunately, I drilled some holes a bit too deep. But at the end of the day, this isn't a customer guitar. No one's going to say it at the end of the day. It is a learning experience after all. So. Yes, pickup cavities are effectively done. You'll notice that my tenon is actually sitting ever so slightly higher than the bottom of the pickup cavity. And I just want to see if I can take some of that off with a file. We don't have loads to play with, but I should be able to just take a couple of mil off the higher end just to give us a little bit more tolerance to play with. If anyone's wondering what this plasticky stuff is, it's actually the epoxy that I used to glue in the initial inlay. Um, I just did a little bit of experiment really, just to brush it on the end of the tenon to see what it would have looked like if I'd put epoxy on, but uh, needless to say, it didn't look too good. So after a bit of work with a file, that now fits in there, lovely. And actually, if I can take a pick up, just feed the wire in there once again. Really need to tape up the ends on that. can see that the pickup will now fit nicely with the neck in place and it's about level with the top of the body. Once the pickup rings in there it will allow it to go just below the levels of the pickup ring which is about perfect really. Certainly the best I can achieve on this style of guitar anyway. One thing to note is that because again the geometry of my neck has not been great in sort of removing this material it has loosened the neck pocket slightly and it's now a bit too loose so I, once again I'm going to have to come in with a veneer in this case it's going to be Wenge veneer 
and we'll use that to tighten up the neck pocket once more but you've seen me do that before so I'm not going to make you stick around and watch me do that next time we're going to be looking at effectively finishing off the body shape uh, getting these horns recarved, getting all the marks out and just generally getting it sanded and ready for finishing there is still a few things like the bridge posts to do as well which we will look at but I think that's enough for today so thanks for watching I will see you next time